Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a blessed day. It's Renee. Welcome back to my channel. So we are continuing on with our tags as well as our inner inside cover. Let me grab my journal. So we're working on our under the sea journal. And this part is going to go right here if I like it. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> um, but um, if it goes according to plan, it'll go on that inside cover. So this is the first tag I made um, a couple days ago. And we started these tags in the last video. So if you missed that, check out the last video. I think that was Under the Sea Part 3. Part 3. Um, but this is the tag that we are going to work on today. And we're going to kind of do the same type of thing on this one. So... What we have done already is put our cheesecloth down. So we gessoed it down so it's it's nice and hard and tough right now, which I like. Um, it's like that crusty feel. Um, the other thing I've done, so I had to let it sit overnight and dry. And then this morning, I just globbed black, black paint all over it. So if you can see the... the um, Oh, the crackle effect has dried, so it's a little crackly and just rough. That's what I wanted. See there along the edge? And then all oh, the other thing I did on this one was I decoupaged those coral napkins onto uh, the cheesecloth after I painted it black. You can barely see it's there. Like here's like a little starfish, and then you've got the coral. Um, and when I spray, this was the other one that I decoupaged onto the paper. And it's got all this white on it. I dabbed some black glue or black paint in between to cover up some of the white. But I'm probably going to spray this with the spray. So these might just get covered with the spray. They might show up. They might not. Either way, it'll be like a little background. It'll be in the background if it does show up at all. Okay, so once you have all that dry... Um, so it's kind of like a couple part series cause, or a step because you got to let everything dry. Uh, now we're going to spray. So I've got a, a white, um, what is this, garbage bag that I kind of tore up and put on my desk because this can make a mess. So the last few days I have had the whole kitchen um, lined with garbage bags when I was dyeing all my papers doing all my sprays and, and doing all my cheesecloths. Like I was doing like a bunch of this cheesecloth, all different colors. So here's a more grungy looking one. I put some more browns in this one. This is more of the blues and purples and such. And it's just like all falling apart, but that's exactly what I want. I want like, just like mesh. <laughs> and then I was dyeing ribbons and all that. So here's a few that we've done um, before. So I've got a few ribbons and I was doing some other ribbons. So like my whole kitchen was just a mess. And my husband was like, oh my gosh. So I have a puzzle on one of our kitchen tables. And then on all the counters, I had all my dyeing stuff. And then my craft room looks like this. And my husband's like, I have no place in this house. You've got every single uh, table covered. And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. Give me a couple days. It'll all be gone. So... Yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna be doing using are these two dilutions, uh, uh, ink spray. Uh, I don't know what this one is. I don't know. I'm sure the color is on here somewhere, but uh, yeah, it's covered up. I've been, This one's been leaking a little, so that one's been covered, covering up. This is turquoise, and this is some kind of blue, like periwinkle blue maybe. I don't know, but I'm gonna shake these up a tad and I'm gonna try to keep it, try to keep it in this area. Okay, let me move the caps out of my way. I lost the other cap already, y'all. Where'd it go? Oh, it's on, it's on here. Oh my gosh, y'all, I swear I would lose my head. Okay, <laughs> ah! okay, so now I'm just gonna spray those and just kind of let them drip in a little. And of course you can't see it right now. You'll be able to see them eventually. So. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna take some of my water. And let them start to drip. So we're gonna do that on that one. Do that on that one. It's really dark. I know you guys can't see it, but it's dripping. It's dripping, and I want it to drip. And I'm making a mess. You might want to wear gloves for this. I just don't. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna just do some dark blue. Whoop. Oh my gosh, do some dark blue. drip. See y'all, <laughs> my hands are always blue. Okay, again, I know you really can't see it. I mean, it just looks darker, right? It just, I mean, you can see it in some areas, but it just looks dark. But we will get it looking lighter. Okay, so then I also have, let me see, these little misters are great to put in mica powders and I put a little bit of rubbing alcohol and hairspray in these, um, these little misters. That way you don't have to use a lot up. You can just use just what you need a little bit, just put a little bit in there. And mix them up a little bit. So just a little bit of hairspray and some rubbing alcohol with your uh, mica powders. I'm gonna start spraying these. This is what's gonna give the shimmer and shine. that whoo so cool I love that and then this is the silver one so can y'all are you seeing that at all so can you see it it's gonna start giving it the shimmer and shine and the color and then this one I've been having a hard time spraying let's see if it'll work otherwise I just take it out and just kind of dip it yeah, it's not. It, this one is, I've been having, this one's been temperamental on me. Come on. Uh, so what I've been doing is doing this, and it's a silver. And I want it kind of dripping down, and it really shows up good on the black when, um, when this gets in the light. Woo! Oops! Well, there we go. Spilled a bunch there. We'll just let that slide down like that. Never a mistake. You can always use it. Oh, and y'all, it's flowing through all those little nooks and crannies. It looks so cool. Actually gonna just pour a little bit right down here. Okay, and let's put some on this one. It's 
so it hits the other ink and it starts to flow. But when all this dries, it'll you'll get that really cool shimmer and shine. Let me put some dripping down here. Okay. Actually, let's do a little bit. <sighs> Keep spilling it, y'all. I'm gonna have shimmer and shine everywhere on this page. That's okay. That is okay. That's what I want, you know? There's never too little shine. <laughs> Actually, I would like a little bit more on this one as well. So I'm just gonna pour that. I need a better mister for that one. And I'm gonna have it run down the side here. Again, I'm sure you probably can't see this on camera, y'all, but it really it is running down and I can see it. It's just, uh. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my heating tool. Yeah, um, I kind of covered the decoupage. You really can't see those, but if they do end up showing up even just a little, it'll be like a little background piece, so that'll be good. I'm gonna rub this little spot off. I don't want, it's just a blob right there in the middle. I just don't want that. Okay, so let me grab my heating tool and I'm gonna start heating this. And what I'm gonna do is try to hit this, uh, um, what is this, the crackle, and see if I can get it to bubble with the paint on it. Um, I'm gonna try to get it to bubble like I did the other ones. So we get that bubble effect. When the paint's on it and you're heating it up, the paint starts to bubble up on that. I gotta get this getting hot. I don't know if you guys can all see it in the lights. We're starting to get the blues coming out. I wonder if I have a like a purplish spray. I can add some purple to this. I might have to look at my drawer. Okay, so you can see the paint. I don't know if you can see it on camera. The paint is starting to bubble up a little on that crackle effect. So you heat it till it starts to bubble. There it goes, it's bubbling up right there. We gotta get this part completely dry before we can move on to the next part. So this might take a tad, it might take a little bit of time here. Let that one sit for a little bit. I'm just gonna this one. Yep, there it goes. You can see it bubbling. Once you get the paint and the spray on here, if you hit it hard enough, 
those start to bubble. And then you get that like antique, like rusty metal kind of look to it. See how it's bubbling right there? I don't know if you can see that. Woo, that one really bubbles. You don't want to set it on fire. <laughs> That's for sure. Did you see that? I was like, woo. Don't set your paper on fire. It was like a fine line between getting it to bubble and having it like totally blow up on you. <laughs> okay, let's switch back to this one. It's still just a tad damp. It's like an underwater cavern. Damp. Let me feel this one. Yeah, it's a little damp. So I might have to dry it just a tad more. But let's you can see this part that kind of bubbled up. But that's really cool. That'll look I don't know if you see those bubbles. That's gonna look so cool when I get the antique stuff on it. It's gonna make it look all grungy. Okay, so I don't know. Depending on how the light is hitting it, you can really see the silver. Um, the little shimmer through that. This one maybe a little more because it's bigger. So depending how the light hits it, you're going to see blues and greens and silvers. And then you have the raised part that looks like all grungy and crusty, just kind of hanging down here along the sides. So... Okay, yeah, I still have to, let's try, let's hit it for just a couple more minutes because I can't really move on until this is completely dry. Sorry, y'all. You can fast forward this part. But you just keep spraying it until you get the look you want. When we go in with the silver and the copper, it's going to lighten this up a lot. As you can see with this one, when I added all the other stuff, it lightened it up. And then depending on how the light hits it, you can see the shiny part. I love this part right here. This looks like this, like you're going into like a deep underwater cave with some like slag types coming down. Yeah, it pretty much covered up the decoupage, but I have like three little lighter areas, so I mean that's still cool. So it depends, you know, if you want to try it, if you can get a better, maybe if you have a darker napkin or a lighter background and you don't use black, it might show up more if like you want a white background or something, but I wanted this to be like kind of darkish. And Make sure this one's dry so I can get the paper on here and everything. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I did, what was the next thing I did? I think I think I did my paper. So I don't remember the order I do things in, y'all. So I am going to kind of use this as an example. And I have this like just card stock that looks kind of grungy. So I'm going to, again, just tear. A piece and we'll see. I don't want it to come out that much. like it's like this ancient I don't know hull of a ship or something you know 
Okay, so let's grab our ink. I'm just grabbing, whoo. Let's do this first. Let's wipe this off. Move those. Whoop. My goodness, y'all. Make sure I don't get ink everywhere. Let me grab my dauber. And we're just gonna ink this up. Again, to make it look more grungy. Now you can do this if you don't want it this dark, like I said, you can do a bright one. You can do um, white paper or cream paper or blue paper, like whatever, you know, whatever you have. Where's my, I want a couple dark ones and then I'm gonna do a lot of lighter um, tags as well, but I want a couple dark ones. And I'm really getting a lot of glue on this. Where do we want this to stick down? Like right there. You don't have to put paper on yours. I just like the look. Okay, so now I'm going to snip this extra off. Oops, I got some ink on this. <laughs> wow, I got a lot of ink. That's why, okay, so here, here's a learning, another learning thing. So that's why I backed my first tag at the end, because um, you're gonna get the seepage, as I just found out. But I think that does look kind of cool, and once this dries, it'll dry a little lighter. But the problem that I had, so I did this whole tag first, and then I backed it, but then the problem I had backing it was I wanted all these little pieces to stick out off the side, and so I didn't wanna chop them off, so it was hard for me to try to cut around the paper and um, all that. I probably should have just traced it on a piece of paper and cut in, but even when I do that, I still have little overhanging pieces, so I like to trim them off. So that was the issue I had with backing this. This is the issue you're going to have if you back it, you know, and then do all this, because see, I wanted all this to hang off and I didn't want to have to trim it off. So, I mean, this is still cool. You can still journal on this. And once, like I said, once this, this part dries, it's gonna dry a little bit lighter. So it's probably, you know, that'll probably have be like a cool look for it. But if you don't want that seepage, um, then you're gonna wanna back it afterwards. But I'm actually liking that even better. I might even put some ink on here to match it up because I think that looks, it just gives it more of a grungy look. So, you know, it just, again, it's all depending on the look you're going for. And now that I'm looking at this, let me make sure I ink all this up. This is still a tad damp. Ugh. We need it dry. Again, you, you might have to let yours sit for a while. I'm trying to do it on camera so y'all can see how I'm doing it, but you might wanna let this sit and get like absolutely dry because I might have to just let that sit for a little while because I can't really do much while it's still damp. Let me feel this one. Yeah, there's still a little damp. Let me hit it one more time with the drying tool. Try to do both at once. <laughs> Bubbling in a couple spots.
I mean, it's not completely dry, but it's getting there. Okay, and then this is the problem you're gonna have too, is when you're heating it up, it's gonna, I'll make sure it's all glued down and I'm gonna clamp it and stuff when I'm done. Okay. All oh, the technical difficulties, but this is what happens when you're crafting, y'all. Okay, so then the next thing I did, what was the next thing I grabbed? One of my little hole punch that I've made. If you don't know how to make these, I show, I have a video on how to use, um, what are these called? Like circle protectors, hole protectors or whatever, and how to ink up your own. Super easy to do. You can do like a whole batch in 15 minutes and have them set for, you know, for you for a long time. So I put that at the top, just like this one. And then the next thing I did was grab my silver. This is gonna lighten it up a little. It's gonna look kind of white, but if it hits the light, it does look like silver. So this is, this one is um, just some silver paste. I don't, I don't even know who makes this. Silver paste. And I just kind of went over just certain areas with the silver. Let me get some on my finger. I don't want to do like too bright. This will give it kind of, it'll, like I said, it'll lighten it up, but it also gives it like the shadow, like this will bring pieces up to the forefront. You'll have shadows in the, in the foreground, the background. And then again, when it hits the light, it's so cool. If you don't have this, you can probably use like a silver metallic paint or a silver metallic, um, what else? Paint or um, maybe a gel stick or something like a, maybe a gelato might even work like a silver one. I'm not sure. Just, you just gotta kinda play with what you have and see what works. And you might get a totally different look, but it might be really cool. It might, you know. So see, this is gonna lighten it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see on camera. Okay. So I'm going to do the same on this one. Just in certain areas. It's going up my nail instead of on my finger. Uh, and while I'm thinking, one of my viewers gave me a great idea. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm always saying that I have, you know, for my scoreboard, I only have like a little mini, mini scoreboard. Um, and she said to use, um, let's see, I don't want that right there. Scrape that off. Um, she said to use the little line on your cutting board right here great idea so you see you got this groove right here you could use this as a long score line um, didn't even think of that so thank you great idea now I hope I remember that I'm so used to using you know when I need to score I just grab out my little scoreboard so hopefully I will remember that tip and use that when I need like a long line to score things, you know, when I'm scoring like my file folders or whatever that are longer and don't fit on my little mini scoreboard. Um, but that was a great idea. See, I love all the tips that y'all give me too because I'm learning every day new things and we, there's so, I mean, there's so many creative people out there, y'all. And um, it's just so fun to learn from each other. I love the community, the crafting community because everyone is so willing to help each other out and give each other tips and you know just help each other along that's what it's all about and I love 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 learning new things and that was a you know a great tip because it's so obvious too and I didn't even think about it <laughs> there's like a score line right there you could be using like a bridge that I could be using for scoring so if any of you have one of these, you know, cutters you, and you don't, and you've been wanting a scoreboard, but you don't want to buy one or whatever, use what you have. 
it's all about, again, using what you have. And yeah, I wasn't going to buy a large scoreboard just because I needed, you know, like I, I just made do with what I had. But now, hey, I've got this and I can, I can even play around with that. Okay, so this again, this is lightening this up a little bit. Again, I don't know if it's not um, showing as well on camera, but when you see it in real life, it looks like, it kind of looks like it's glowing in certain areas from the background, which I think is cool. Okay, I am going to dip my finger in this water here, my jar of water, my cup of water, which has probably got paint in it too, but at least it's better than nothing. <laughs> Okay, and then let's see, let me get that off. And I'm gonna scrape off a little bit of those chunks. Okay, so cool, it's starting to look like something. Okay, then I would grab my copper and this is, I think I got this one off of Amazon, Deco Art Metallic Luster. This is copper kettle. Looks like that, it's just like a paste. And I know people say, don't put your fingers in it because you can get it all, you know, whatever. But I've been putting my fingers in it for since I've had it. So I'm just going to keep doing it at this point. If it's contaminated, it's contaminated. Um, so now I just go in and I'm going to put some around the edges. And this is when I want to get onto those, um, those little bubbles. So I'll put some there. I put some around the the um, pole protector, not all the way around, just a little bit, just, you know, to make it look like it's it's starting to rust or, you know, become antique -y. I put some on the paper. Again, I come down here. And I'm gonna put some, again, on this part that like bubbled up really well. Oh, it looks so cool, y'all. It really brings out those bubble areas. And then, um. I'm going to hit just, you know, random areas on the, on the mesh. Got some silver there. I'm going to, I'll just cover it up with that. So let me bring this up close. So I don't know if you guys can see that. See the bubbles? When you hit it with some kind of paste over it, uh, my camera's trying to, trying to adjust, come on. There you go. When you hit it with some paste, it, it really um, highlights those bubbles and it makes it look like it's just this, um, I don't know, like old metal or antique, you know, just rusted metal. So I love that. So if you have any kind of like paste, um, glossy accents, anything like that, you can use that on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go through and hit some a few areas. Antique this up a little bit. Ooh, that looks like rope kind of hanging at the bottom right there. Ooh, that's so cool. along the side it's got like I don't know barnacles and stuff hanging off it rusty yuck stuff <laughs> and this also um, again lightens it but it also highlights certain areas of the mesh and then it brings certain things to the foreground pushes things back you can see the different crevices and the the you know the holes and such i love that again i'm lightly hitting the bubbles at the top here i'm gonna do a few along the side Actually, I don't think I wanted all that. There we 
there, so I'm just gonna rub it off. So I'm in this corner with the bubbles. You can't really see the, yeah, those um, decoupage parts just kind of went into the background, but no biggie. I know they're there. <laughs> okay, so can y'all see how this is turning out? Again, depending on the light. You can see what the copper and the silver do. Okay. So I finished with that. Then the next thing I did was, I'm gonna wet my fingers again. Now you can just decorate these any way you want. What I did was grab a little bit of this mesh. So for this one, I made like a little nest at the bottom. <laughs> so let's see, let me move this and grab this and grab, so I grabbed just a couple different browns and I kind of do the smooshing technique. So I put this on, wet it up, and then just start smooshing this in it. And I got some darker ink. I just kind of did the same thing and just try to get it in different areas. And so I have dark and lights and okay, and then I take it apart. Now, if you don't want it as saturated like this, let me grab another piece. You can do it. I'm gonna try a couple of different ways. You could just take your, um, this is how I normally do it for uh, like vintage junk journals and such. Just ink it up like this and you'll see the different look you get. I'll show you the two different ways. You get dark areas, light areas. And I actually might like this one better because it'll be a little lighter and stand out from the dark background. Okay, so you have two different ways of doing it. This is a little damp, so I'm gonna to try to let this dry. But you can do it the smooshing technique way and you'll get more coverage, or you can do it just where you're dabbing it with the dry ink and you're gonna get less coverage, but a lighter. Or so you can combine some of these too. So all I did then, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the dark and a little bit of the light and I just kind of pulled it apart. And had you know just make a big little nest with it and again I fiddle with it y'all <laughs> I just fiddle 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 until I like what I see so actually that's quite a bit I don't think I need all that and this mesh was that one that looked kind of like the net so you can it literally this one comes apart into strings very easily. This is a really cheap one. But it's perfect for this type of um, project for under the sea. Oh, I don't know. 
Okay, so then what I did, I actually, which glue did I use? I don't even remember which glue I used, but we'll just grab this one. So then I just kind of went in and put my glue and then just patted it all down wherever you want it. This glue dries clear, but you know, you can take a paper towel and go in, blot it up. Just be careful because it will turn your um, It can dye your um, cheesecloth blue from your from your spray ink. So just put a little bit here. So just let that sit and dry. Let's see, and then I just grabbed. I have all these little stickers. Um, let's see if I have a little baby shell. Or did I use them all up? There they are, they're hiding. So then I grabbed a little baby shell. And you don't, you can figure out where you want to put it. Do I want them kind of hiding in there or over it? I think over it. Okay, again, let's do this glue. So these are like little um, 3D um, stickers. And I put the glue on it. And then I also took some of the copper and hit the shell or you know your sticker whatever you're gonna decorate with so if you're decorating with you could decorate with metallic accents little charms I don't want these to get too bulky that's why I'm trying to stick with just these little 3d stickers um, and then I just kind of antique that up to whoops my finger got stuck so this is this is the part that takes a little while to dry so um, usually what I do is I put like a book or something on top of this just to let it dry and to, to hold it down on top of all this and hold all this down and I'm going to cover that blue up with that and this will all dry clear and if not, I can just add more on top. So yeah, so this part, I put a book on to hold this down and to make sure that it's gonna dry real well. So once that's dry, then all I did was take some Sari Silk. Where's my Sari Silk? And you can get, I got a whole bunch. I got this whole thing full. Um, it's all messed up right now. It's like in a big wad, but I'm using like the blues and greens in this. So. Um, I took the sari silk and just tied it up. And what I might also do is if I make some little mini tags or have some little charms, some like ship charms or something, I might tie um, like a little string through here and have a charm hanging as well. So I'm gonna put this one under a book so this will hold all this down tight. So let me do that while I'm thinking about it. That in our book. Okay, so then we've got this one, and it's the same thing. So all I'm gonna do, probably with how much time we got? Yeah, we're we're hitting about 45 minutes or so. So I'll now here you just figure out like what kind of scene do you want? So I'm thinking maybe I've got the seahorse. Um, I'll put some of this at the bottom. I've got this fish too. <laughs> And then I've got all these little little shells. So I might do something like this at the bottom with a couple shells, you know, hanging out at the bottom. And I might just 
just leave the seahorse or something like that. And then you gotta let it dry. And then this will be the inside cover. This will get glued into the inside cover of the book. So then, then I'll um, put clamps on everything to make sure it's all in there really well. So that's how I made these tags, y'all, see? So hope you enjoy. I hope you have a blessed day. Have fun creating. Oops, sorry. Let's make sure I'm on camera. So have fun creating, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, y'all.